Hello, everybody. Welcome to Saturdays with Steph. Um, I'm Stephanie of Quilting with Stephanie Stitches. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, glad to see you. Well, today, uh, my good friend Shannon of Slay Arts was supposed to be here with me, but unfortunately, she got stuck at work. Boo. <laughs> so um, today, I'm just going to be working on finishing the binding on this rock candy quilt. I've got my binding on one side. I've got to flip it over into the other side. So I'm ironing it over right now and then I'll start sewing on it. Um, but hi, Mary. Hi, Ingrid. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Karen. Good to see you guys. Um, I've got a lot of things going on right now. Getting ready for a Millersburg retreat in April. I'm super excited about that. I can't wait to see everybody. Um, and most of the people in the chat here are going to be in Millersburg. So hi, ladies. Good to see you. Uh, almost done with all the things for Millersburg. So I'm really excited about that. I should be, have them all finished by the end of this next week. Um, let's see what else is going on. Oh, not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, Shannon and I will do the new the next New York Beauty Block. So looking forward to that. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Shannon's going to finish Rock Candy tomorrow on her channel sometime in the afternoon. She's not sure what time she's going to start yet. I think it's going to depend on her schedule. She was saying two, maybe three. Um, so she's not going to have her normal brunch, um, but she'll be on a little later in the afternoon. So hi, Karen. Hi, Gidget. Good to see you. Um, so check out her channel tomorrow to see the puts together of Rock Candy. Um, that'll be fun. And then our good friends, Stephen and Walter, are off to Australia, so they don't have a live tomorrow. <laughs> Darn! They're a highlight to the Sunday afternoon. They make it fun and funny. But uh, So check out Shannon's channel. So she's not going to overlap Stephen no matter what time she comes on because they won't be there. So um, any sneak peeks for Millersburg? No, no, no. <laughs> you girls can't get it out of me. I was at a quilt show the other night with my aunt who um, is coming to the Millersburg retreat with her friends and she won a ribbon on her quilt. So I was super proud of her, but they tried to get, they tried their best to get it out of me. And if I won't tell my family, I'm not going to tell you guys. <laughs> hi, Catherine. Hi, Russ. Good to see you. Um, so no sneak peeks for Millersburg. Sorry. Uh, and then let's see. Hi, Loretta. Good to see you. Just joined today. Awesome. Uh, what else is going on? So this past week was super busy with my kids. Super fun thing we found out today. We got our, our daughter, Sarah. She is 15 and she's starting college in the fall. She got her acceptance letter today in the mail. So yay. I'm super excited for her. She was thrilled. She... <laughs> She's the teenager, so, you know, they don't smile a whole lot all the time, but she was, she's was she been smiling ear to ear all day ever since, so I'm really, really happy for her. So, it's a good day here. Hi, Sean. Good to see you. Um, so, she's going to start college in the fall. Uh, so, super happy about that. Um, let's see. That, the one thing about that, and not that I've ever, like, not wanted to homeschool our kids, but it takes a little bit of pressure off, so... <laughs> That'll be kind of nice, although I'll have to definitely help her with her, you know, her homework and stuff. But um, she's nervous uh, because she's never been in a organized school environment before. Um, but she's going to be really she's going to be just fine. And she did go to an informational meeting and she met some of the other kids and met an advisor that she's going to be working with. So I think that's helped. And we took her or my husband took her and walked around the school a bit to get her familiar with it. It's a community college, so it's not super big. Um, and she actually got brave and walked around by herself for a while. She's like, okay, daddy, let me go walk around. And, and uh, I think that made her feel more comfortable because she came home and she was super confident. So really excited about that. Um, if she is, she is only 15. Yes. Going to college. So she technically is a few years away from going, but um, she's quite a bit ahead of her peers because of homeschooling. So, um, she gets to go a little bit early, um, but she'll finish up like her high school courses there. Um, but it'll count towards her associate's degree and for high school. So that's a really nice thing. And while she's in high school, um, all the classes are paid for, for free. The only thing we have to pay for is books. So that will help her get a little bit ahead and save some money 
Um, cause college is really expensive these days <laughs> and we have four kids and we know one of our children is definitely not going to go to college. He has special needs, but we have three others that probably will, or at least some kind of vocational school or something. So for her to get a couple of years, um, free, uh, and get her associate's degree that we don't have to pay for great. Cause then all we'll have to like help her out with is her last couple of years, um, to get her bachelor's degree. So lovely. I'm so excited about that. Thank you guys. Is the college local? Yeah. The college is about 20 minutes away. Um, and so for the first semester, we're going to have to drive her. And then she's, when she, um, gets her, she's going to get her temps this summer, her temporary permit to try to drive. And then as soon as she can get her license, when she turns 16, she's definitely going to get it and she'll be able to drive herself. So that's good. But it's a sacrifice that we are willing to make to drive her back and forth <laughs> um, because obviously college is, you know, what she wants to do. And for us to save all this money is great. So um, definitely worth it. So really excited. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. Uh, hi, Kelly's Quilts and Crafts or Quilts and Cruises. Sorry. Um Mary said, Kelly, are you a cruiser? <laughs> I am not a cruiser. I've been on a cruise a, lo a long time ago, but I am going on my first quilting cruise this spring, late spring, early summer, which I'm really excited about. I'm going with Ingrid, who's here in the chat. It's kind of like our birthday is one day apart in December. And so we're kind of like, it's our birthday celebration together. <laughs> But it's a quilting cruise and it's going to be with the quilting marine and the combat quilter and Rob Appel. So really looking forward to that. Um, I'm excited to go on a quilting cruise. I've never been, I've been on cruises, but I've never been on a quilting cruise to see how all that works. And, uh, you know, so I'll definitely we'll be filming and and telling you guys what it's all about. But um, yeah, so interesting that somebody was talking about quilting cruises. Uh, Ingrid said, super excited for the cruise. Me too. I am really excited about it. Hi, Denise. Um, Gidget said, does Ohio have any snow? We did this morning. We woke up to snow. It snowed overnight. And now the sun's been out all day. And even though it's not warm, it's chilly out. The sun's been hot enough that it melted the snow. Um, now it is supposed to rain, I think, a little bit tomorrow. So depending on how cold it is, we could get snow again. I don't know. But we did have snow overnight, so, but it's gone now, but it's real. I just stepped out before I came down here and uh, it's pretty cold out. There's a wind chill. So yeah. Um, let's see. That's on my bucket list to do, said Mary, a quilting cruise. I know GE Designs does one annually. Oh, that would be fun with Gudrun. How fun. Hi, Landa. Good to see you. My colleague organized a quilting cruise to Alaska this May. After she gets back, I'm going to pick her brain about it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I cannot wait. Like I said, I've never been on a quilting cruise before. I don't know what it entails or how it works. I mean, obviously we're going to sew, but um, all the other details. And I'm uh, a little bit, I have a little bit of anxiety over it. <laughs> not because I'm not excited to go, but I'm very much like a planner down to every detail and the fact that I have no control over the planning and what's going on, not even the control of the planning, but I don't have like an agenda and where we have to be at what time and all that kind of stuff. That's a little bit hard for me. <laughs> um, the more I think about the cruise, the more it's kind of driving me a little bit crazy. But I know that the, it's through Stitching Heaven and they've done a lot of quilting cruises. So I know everything is going to be fine. It's going to go off perfect. It's just my issue not theirs <laughs> so um that's just how i am i'm very much like everything planned down to the minute when i go on trips vacations um uh, retreats business things it's so that's kind of hard for me but other than that you know uh pat said love to see you both in your live do you plan to do this weekly well um we will be live together, Pat, when we can. So Shannon was supposed to be here tonight, but unfortunately she got stuck at work. They had a lot of stuff come in today. She's a chef and they had a lot of things come in today and they got backed up. So um, hopefully she'll be home and she'll be able to pop in, but I don't know if she will. But I would love for her to be able to, to come live as much as she can. 
because I love sewing with her and I love talking to her too. She's a great friend. So um, where does the cruise go? So we're leaving out of Galveston, Texas, and then we're going to Honduras and then a couple spots in Mexico. So really excited about that. Um, and I think we have like three days at sea where all we do is sew. So that'll be nice. Uh, thank you, Kay. Hi, Kathy Cantu. Good to see you. Hi, Evelyn. Mary said, oh, she lives in Seattle, Alaskan cruise. Yeah, that's on my bucket list is an Alaskan cruise. I've always wanted to do that. My grandparents did it when they were still living. And this was years ago, probably 25 years ago. And they said, and they were, they were travelers. They traveled all over the world. And um, they said that was one of their favorite vacations ever. So I think that would be great. Uh, let's see. Hi, Karen Burnett. Good to see you. Mary said, is your cruise project driven or bring your own? Nope, they have projects for us. And you could either bring your own fabric and buy the pattern or you could get their kit. But if you got their kit, it was all pre-cut. And so that's what I did. <laughs> uh, you have to cut everything ahead of time because you can't bring like big scissors and big things on the ship. So we, Ingrid and I both got the pre-cut kits. So all we have to do is show up and sit down and sew, which is really nice. They'll have machines for us. Um, you can only bring like a really small iron. We can bring a rotary cutter, but I'm definitely not going to bring my favorite rotary cutter because there is a chance they said that they can potentially confiscate it. So, and then you can only bring like really tiny snips. So um, very restricted. That's the only downside. So that's a part of, I think, another part of my anxiety because I, I don't know like what tools we can have, if they're going to take something, um, if I'm going to have my things, that kind of stuff. So, but that's okay. I'm sure it'll all work out fine. Um, but really excited about it. So yeah, it's project driven and the combat quilter and the quilting Marine Mark, they're going to be teaching uh, quilts of valor or there's, they're giving us two quilts that are two quilt projects. Um, and you don't have to do two. You can, you could have done just one or anything like that, but um, two quilts of, or uh, two quilts that are quilt of valor approved. I, I'm not speaking correctly today, but yeah. So the two quilts we're doing, the red, white, and blue, it's a, it's not called the quilts of valor cruise. I think it's called the Patriot cruise or something like that, but it's like two quilts that we're making are eligible for quilts of valor. Um, obviously they were both in the military, so it was important for them to do that. And I heard that they already are, this, this cruise was so popular, this Patriot cruise that they're going to do another one in 2025 with all the same people. So the quilting Marine, the combat culture and Rob Appel. So, um, yeah. So if you guys are interested, that's at stitch in heaven. Uh, let's see. Hi, Shelly Stewart. Good to see you. Hi, Dana. Good to see you. Charlotte, hi there. I have done three Alaskan cruises, said Kelly Squilton Cruises. Again, proximity and easy. Kat said her favorite was the Alaskan cruise. I hear that. Everybody seems to really love the Alaskan cruise. I really i am going to have to try that someday. So I really would like to see, I'm, that's one part of the country I've never been to is Alaska. So I'd really like to see that. Lana, or Landa said we did our 40th and went to Alaska. Nice. Nice, nice. Uh, Landa said I understand their pre-kit cut kits are awesome. Good. That's good to hear. I know a lot of people that have gone on their cruises and had a really good time. So I'm sure it's going to be fine. I just have this OCD thing <laughs> that I know I need to know that everything is good. Sorry, guys. I got to wipe my nose. So our weather here in Ohio has been going back and forth between spring and winter. Mother Nature can't decide what she wants to do. <laughs> so my nose is a little bit drippy. Just sinus stuff I get in the spring. Everything started to sort of bloom and we had some pollen and uh, then it snowed again. But so my, my body's like, what is going on? <laughs> totally worth it for the glaciers, said Kelly. Yes, that's the main reason I want to go to Alaska is I want to see the glaciers. 
So I think that would be awesome. I've been to a lot of places. There's a couple of places on my bucket list. And one of them is Alaska. That's probably the only domestic one because I've been to most of the United States. Um, and then, of course, I would like to go to Australia someday and then Japan. And that's probably the top of my bucket list. Oh, and the um, British Isles. But that's a big wish wish list and very expensive. So <laughs> I'll be lucky if I get to go to one of those big places. So uh, let's see. I had four inches of snowfall yesterday, said Karen. Wow, you got a lot more than I did. We just got like an inch and it's gone already. So So right now I'm just ironing my um, my binding over so I can bind the other side, the flip side of the quilt. It's already attached to one side. So um, I'm, somebody was asking about um, the Little Hooter, the the Legit Kids Owl Quilt that we started last week on Shannon's channel, uh, when we were going to be doing that. So we're going to be doing that at least for this month. We don't know it's going to happen in April because not only did Shannon start a new job, so her schedule's a little different, but also there's a retreat coming up in April. So we're not sure when we're going to get back to it. Um, but right now it's bi-weekly so not this week since we started last week it'll be next Saturday after my live on Shannon's channel so if you guys were watching that saw somebody ask me earlier and I can't remember who so I apologize for that all right I got my binding all pressed over so now I'm just going to wonder clip it I would be like Stephen in Australia, love kangas and koalas, said Landa. Yeah. I told him he has to sneak me back one in. He's going to have to put one in a suitcase for me, a kangaroo. <laughs> uh, hi, Donna. Good to see you. So what are you guys working on there at home if you're working on something? So... um. This week was just a UFO whip, so that's why I decided to get the binding done on this quilt. But next week, we're going to do rope bowls. And I know there was a couple of you that told me that you've been wanting to do a rope bowl, so um, glad to hear that. So next Saturday, on Saturdays with Steph, we're going to do a rope bowl. Now, I'm going to dye my rope, so I'm going to work on that this week and see how that goes. <laughs> and I'll let you guys know. Um, but I'm going to sort of try to videotape it a little bit Why I videotape. Sorry, I'm like old. I keep calling things videotape still. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> I'm going to video it uh, and see how it goes. And if it goes okay, well, I will tell you whether it went okay or not. But uh, if the video comes out okay, I'll put the video up of dying the rope. Um, and then we'll sew... Uh, the rope bowl together on Saturday. So it's my first time dying rope. So it should be interesting to see what happens. But I know it's possible because they were selling dyed rope at QuiltCon. And that's what gave me the idea to do it because I was going to buy some because they had some beautiful blues. You guys know I'm sucker for blues. But they were really expensive. Really expensive. So I'm just watching. would love to see how you do binding. Okay, well, I don't have my down camera today, so I can't, because I thought Shannon was going to be here. So I can't really show you down, but I attached my binding, <coughs> excuse me, by machine. So I've got it attached to the back right now, and then I ironed it all up so it's nice and flat. And all I'm going to do is bend it over right now and put clips all along and sew this together. Or sew it down onto the front. And when I sew it down on I on the back, when I sew it on the back, I always use a very small stitch length. 
So the binding will have no chance of coming off, ripping off. Um, and when I sew it on the front, I do like a 2.5 stitch length. So like more like a top stitch, st uh, stitch length. So the stitches sort of match the stitching, um, in the quilting on my quilt top. So I try to make them about the same stitch length. And I sew right on the edge of um, the fabric in the front and you can't see it because it's black on black, but right on the edge, not even an eighth of an inch, just literally right on the edge, just to hold it down. Binding is my least favorite part of the process and that's why it's taken so long for me to put the binding on this quilt. And I don't know why it is, I just don't enjoy it. I enjoy making quilts, I enjoy the quilting. <laughs> Um, I just don't enjoy the binding. So it takes me a while usually to do binding because of that, because I put it off, but I wanted to have it done for tomorrow for Shannon's live because she's going to be finishing up rock candy. So I wanted to have my quilt completely finished. Uh, Karen said, oh, wait. What kind of dye? I'm using writ dye for cotton fabric. There's two different kinds of dye. So if you're going to dye your rope, uh, first of all, you need to make see if your rope is 100% cotton, which is what I'm using. If it is, you can use the writ dye made for cotton. Um, but if, it's, if your rope has any polyester in it and you want to dye it, first of all, it's going to be really hard to dye it. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, but if you want to try... You need to get the dye that's made for polyester fibers. So there is writ dye made for that, but I'm just using writ dye. You can get it at um, Walmart, Amazon. I got it on Amazon because I was looking for a specific color. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to use to dye my rope. Let's see. Hi, Stephen. Um, Kat said, I decided not to buy cherry wood. I could not decide how I would use it. The colors are so beautiful, though. Yeah, I love cherry wood fabric. Their colors are really, really rich. Um, and I'm really excited that they have it by the bolt now because I've never made a whole quilt with it because I couldn't get background fabric. I'm a matchy-matchy kind of girl. I like all my fabrics to match. <laughs> Pat said, dyeing is so much fun and can be rapidly addicting. That's good. I'm actually really excited for it. And I have a feeling that Pat, that I could get addicted to it really quickly because just the possibilities of all the different colors of rope I could make. <laughs> I think that's going to be great. Karen said, working on Heart of the Home from American Patchwork and Quilting using Strawberry Lemonade. Oh, that's going to be nice. I think I saw that quilt in the in the magazine. Let's see. I know I'm missing comments. I apologize. Uh, let's see. Go back a little bit. Karen said, I'm working on a tulip pattern. Pat said, I'm just choosing the border and binding for a little original piece with two different kinds of houses. Ooh, I can't wait to see that, Pat. You should show us on Wednesday. Um, let's see. Karen B is working on the Villa Rosa EKG pattern. Nice. I've seen that one. That's neat. Uh, quilting compounds had to finish my scrap quilt. Oh, nice. Yay. Finishing is great. Ingrid's working on her rock candy blocks for tomorrow that she had to finish. Awesome. Charlotte said, I'm looking forward to the rope bowl video. They're so fun. I love making rope bowls. It's so fun. I'm not big into making um, a bunch of projects that aren't quilting, but I love making rope bowls. They're fun. A barn block floor pillow, said Gidget. Oh, that sounds really cool.
stitch length is an interesting tip, said Kay. Hmm. I just do that because I stitch it small on the back. Because if it's a quilt, especially one that my kids are going to use, I don't want the stitches to come out. They're kind of rough on stuff. I have boys. <laughs> Landa says, I don't like binding either. Yeah. It's one of, it's like, but I do like it. It's a catch 22. I like it and I don't like it. I don't like to do it because it's tedious and boring. Um, but I do like when you round like that last edge and you're almost done. So great. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Hi, Joanne. Good to see you. Hi, Charlotte. Or I already said hi to you. Sorry. Hi, Jana. Uh, hi, Jean. Good to see you. Russ said I'm stuck on the couch under a doggy and a kitty. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Uh, Celie's making binding for her rock candy. Nice. That's what I'm binding right now, Celie. <laughs> binding rock candy. Um, Kathy said, I buy a large bolt so I can throw it in the washer. I think I missed whatever you said before that. Uh, Kay said, well, sometimes I'm not sure. I like how my stitching looks on the front of the quilt because it's so different. I never thought about blending it in with the long, longer stitch length. Yeah, you do whatever you like. I just like to do that because then it sort of looks like um, if you kind of match the stitch length of the quilting stitches, it kind of looks like it's supposed to be there. <laughs> Uh, Steven says, hi, Russ, caught the tail end of your live today. Been busy packing. Did you finish packing? I imagine you have already because I know you. You're very prepared. Kathy said, cherry wood is so soft, though. Yes, it is. It's amazing. I love cherry wood fabric. Steven said, <coughs> excuse me, stay tuned to the channel. <coughs> excuse me. There are going to be a lot of videos and shorts coming once we're over there. <coughs> Good to know. <coughs> Excuse me. Can't wait to see all the fluffy kangaroos and things like that that you're going to show us. Thank you for being here, Kelly. Uh, Jean said I wanted to get some of the cherry wood fabric, but it's just too much for my budget. It is a pricier fabric for sure because it's all hand dyed in the States. And Anything made in the States or hand dyed is going to be, it's going to be more expensive. So I understand that it's not in a lot of people's budget. Kay said, I'm sure it will take Walter longer to pack because he's so meticulous. Let's see. No, I'm not getting sick. It's just sinusy stuff because the weather's changing. 
we have pollen going on and I'm really sensitive to that. And so it's, it's, I'm not sick. Nope. Sorry. I didn't mean to cough like in front of everybody, <laughs> but I can't stop it. Janice said I hit a cough lately too. Hi, Deborah. Good to see you. Oh, Ingrid said she lost Bob and Chicken. Darn. <laughs> Um, Deborah said the cherrywood fabric that Soya was showing the other day is gorgeous. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I love cherrywood fabric. It's got such a nice feel to it. Okay. All right, I'm running out of um wonder clips, so I'm gonna stop. I have about half the quilt clipped. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing. And uh, then when I get to the point where I had to stop clipping, I'll, I'll take these clips and then clip again. So let's go ahead and get, get sewing here. I'm excited to get this one done. So this Wednesday, Stephen is going to be gone in Australia, but we're still going to have the sew day. Uh, the Zoom link for our, this week is different than the normal sew day Zoom link. Um, so if you want to come on, on Wednesday, you should have gotten an email from Stephen if you're on his email list with the Zoom link. And if you're not on his email list or you didn't get it, the link is in my community tab. So I'd love to have you come on over. We'll miss Steven, but we're still gonna carry on. Hi Valerie, good to see you. Not long now, and I will see Stephen and Walter in the flesh, <laughs> said Philippa. That's right. So exciting. The only th bad thing about sewing black binding on when you have a black border is it's really hard to see. <laughs> and I'm using black thread too. So we're going to pray that this turns out all right because I can't really see much here. So is everybody ready for spring and Easter and all that stuff coming up? You can hardly believe that Easter is next weekend already. Already. It's it's just, it's early this year, but it seems like this last month has gone really fast. And then about a week after Easter, a week in a couple of days, is the big eclipse here in the States. And it's going to go right through our city. We're going to have 100% totality. So we're kind of getting excited about that.
Uh, Karen said, I hope you have a wonderful time and a beautiful weather on your trip, Stephen. That was nice. And uh, Philippa said, a little less clothes than you were wearing in Canada. <laughs> yeah, because it just snowed here, Philippa. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be toasty there. Uh, Deborah said, every month has doomed by so far. I think it's on hyperspeed. You know, it seems like the older I get, the faster the years go. It's strange. And I remember when I was a kid, we used to always think like, oh, it's taking forever to get to insert something here. Birthday, Christmas, summer break, right? And now it feels like it goes so fast that I... I can barely remember the last one by the time the next one is here. Instead of hunting for Eastern eggs, we'll be hunting for kangaroos because they're so fluffy. I know. <laughs> oh, goodness. Charlotte, yes, I'm very excited. I'll probably spend the time making sure Stephen doesn't kidnap a kangaroo. <laughs> He's got to kidnap too. He's got to bring one back for me too. <laughs> Let's see. We only have to go a little ways from home to see the totality here in Texas. Awesome. Uh, Gidget said, with the snow here, I told the grandson that Chris the Christmas rabbit was coming next week for not the Easter bunny. <laughs> right? Our um, housing development, our HOA, puts on a Easter egg hunt for the kids every year. And it was actually supposed to be today, but they had to cancel it because it was so snowy and windy this morning and cold. So they're, well, I shouldn't say cancel it, but postpone it. So they postponed it, um, I think, to tomorrow or maybe Monday. Now, Monday here, again, the weather's bipolar. Today it's freezing. And by Monday, it's supposed to be in the 60 degree Fahrenheit range and sunny. So, <laughs> strangest weather this year Let's see. <laughs> I wish, Stephen. I wish. Uh, Charlotte, that might be home to, hard to get a kangaroo onto the flight home. <laughs> and Valerie said, we've been experiencing the March line in New York City lately has been cold. Yeah. Stephen, did you have Walter sew a pouch into your new shirt? Oh, that's a good idea, Seely. You should have done that, and then he could have stuffed a Joey in there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Valerie said it has been cold, windy, and rained all day today. Yuck. Hardest part about getting a kangaroo on the plane is fighting it for <laughs> window seat. <laughs> That's good. Deborah said, what state do you live in? I live in Ohio. I'm right up by Lake Erie, so... Um, A little chilly today because we're getting the wind off the lake, so. 
<laughs> Ingrid said, every time I hear the word fluffy, I hear it in Stephen's voice. <laughs> That's funny. I have a big carry on, Seely, said Stephen. Nice. So for any of you here in the chat that don't know about Steven, Steven's got a channel, Bland Designs in the Idiot Quilter, and he does a lot of quilting stuff, some stuff that's not quilting. Um, he and his husband, Walter, do a show once a week called So Chatty on Fridays, and then they normally have a live on Sundays that is really, really funny. <laughs> I laugh the entire time. Um, it's just they chat with subscribers and they usually have topics and we usually go off topic, but it's a lot of fun. If you haven't checked out Steven's channel, head on over there. He won't have a live this Sunday, which is normally his time Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern because they're going to be flying to Australia. So if you're wondering if you're here and you're new and you don't know him, you're wondering what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> they're off to Australia tomorrow. But in the meantime, you can check out his channel because he's got a lot of great videos up there. He was just finishing up. Um, I don't know if he finished or not. I know he had one video this week, but uh, they did a embroidery machine series or how to use your embroidery machine and all things embroidery. My favorite one was the stand up lace. That was really cool. Um, but a really good series on embroidery. So if you're an embroidery person, you might want to check that out. And also my friend Russ is here in the chat and he's got a great channel. Holt Meets World. And he does a once a week live on Saturdays at 11 a.m. And then he has a blog of everything kind of he did for the week, including his personal life and sewing on Sunday evening. So I want to check that out too. <clears throat> yeah, you won't be able to see what I'm sewing today because I was expecting um, Shannon, which it's totally fine, but I was expecting her to come on with me and we were just going to chat and talk to you guys, but um, she got stuck at work, which she's a chef and they're really, they were really busy. So totally understandable. Um, so I wasn't prepared with a second camera. So sorry about that. I am binding my rock candy quilt. I'll show you guys in a minute. I'm not going to have it all done right this second, but I'm going to get to the point where I have to put on some more clips. So I'm going to um, pick it up here in a second and I'll show you what I've got done so far. One eight two hours of traveling time to Australia. Wow, that's a long time on a plane. Yikes! <clears throat> I bet Shannon loves being referred to as a chef again. I think she probably does, Ingrid. I like calling her that. It's fun. Shannon is so talented. She's such a good, 
sewist and chef and she's amazing. She does improv. Got a lot of stuff going on. So I put the link in the chat for Together We Sell Retreats, which is my quilting retreat company. Want to check that out. Shannon and I are hosting a virtual retreat on June 23rd of this year. Um, registration will stay open until June 1st. And we're excited to, it's our second virtual retreat together. So we're looking forward to that. And I also have in-person retreats and I have one in Ohio, which is in a few weeks here, one in Pennsylvania in September and one in Georgia in, over New Year's. That one's full, Ohio's full, but in Pennsylvania, I have one spot left. So if you're interested in an in-person retreat in Pennsylvania, check it out. Okay. So this is what I have so far. And I can't see what I'm showing you guys. Okay, so this is what I have so far found. So now I'm gonna have to um, clip some more before I can bind anymore. I ran out of binding clips, so. Yes, I'm a machine binder, don't criticize. <laughs> no quotes in police. I love to machine bind. It gets it done faster. I don't have the time nor the want to hand bind because I don't want to poke myself a million times and bleed all over my quilt. The few times I've had to hand sew in the last year, all I did was stick myself and have a band-aid on practically every finger. So no. Um, uh, let's see. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> Mary's asking Stephen, can people come and go at your May 4th retreat? That is the worst part of the trip, said Stephen. Yeah, I imagine that plane ride. <clears throat> I've got antsy on a plane ride from Cleveland to Seattle, which is nowhere near <laughs> 22 hours. It's like five hours. So I can't even imagine 22 hours on planes. I would probably be going nuts. And I usually try to sit as close up to the front of the plane as I can. So as soon as the plane lands... I can get off very quickly because I do get very like claustrophobic and I want to get off. <sighs> it's not just the planes though. I feel like that in cars too. Like after about five, six hours in a car, I need out. I'm done. <laughs> At least for a while. I need to take a break. I just get antsy sitting still that long. Russ is being held hostage by his four-legged friends. Yeah. Debbie said, just signed up for your virtual retreat. Oh, great. Thank you. Looking forward to it. So our virtual retreat in June, I know I didn't talk a lot about it, but it's uh, themed. It's called Beach Bum. And Shannon and I are both coming up with projects that go together. Two different projects, but they go together. You can use them together that you can use this summer. So... We're really looking forward to that. The last retreat, the last virtual retreat was a lot of fun and we had a really good response. So um, we started, we decided to do another one because a lot of people asked us when we're going to do another one. So Philippa said, you get used to the long plane rides. Yeah, you've had a lot more long plane rides than I have. The longest one I've ever been on was when I went to Europe. The couple times I went to Europe. So but those weren't 22 hours. I think total maybe travel time was maybe nine hours between, you know, layover and stuff. That's not bad. It's not 22. 
Uh, Valerie said, aren't machine bindings stronger than hand sewn? At least mine are. Yes, they are. Traditionally, though, um, bindings are supposed to be hand sewn on, but, and I know there's some people out there that are very traditional, and if you don't do it, they don't think you're a quilter, but I don't care. I don't make my quilts for other people. I make them for me, so I'm okay with it. But I've also heard people say you're not a quilter if you don't quilt the quilt yourself either. And I just think that that's kind of ridiculous. But another thing, that's me. I mean, I've heard people say, well, if you if you send it out to a long armor and don't quilt it yourself, then you're not you're not a you're not a real quilter, which is crazy because not everybody can afford a long arm machine. And some people just can't quilt on a domestic just for because of physical limitations. So I think that's insane. I don't like quilt police. <laughs> Hi, Carissa. Good to see you. My hands hurt, Carissa, too. How much handwork watching basketball? Oh, she's talking to Carissa. Okay. Doing handwork. So I did get back, I haven't done cross stitch in years. I got back into cross stitch recently and I really like it, but I just um, don't find myself having a lot of time to work on it. But that's about all the hand stitching I can take. Cause even after doing that for a little bit, my hands hurt a little bit, so. Oh, goodness, Chris, she said I'm sick, but above the dirt. I hope you feel better soon. Valerie said, I can attest to how much fun your virtual retreat is, Stephanie, and the patterns are great and extra for sure. Oh, thank you, Valerie. I appreciate that. Yeah, we had a really good time last time. So we got a lot of people asking us to do another one. So we decided to do it. Vintage button tree. Ooh, I'd like to see a picture of that. That sounds interesting. Is the virtual retreat on a weekend? Yes, it's on a Sunday, uh, June 23rd. Mm -hmm. It'll be from 10 a.m. Eastern time to 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're starting it a little bit later this time than we did last time, just because um, that was a really, it was really early for people that are on the West Coast. And we do have some West Coast friends that, um, cultures that come uh, to the retreat as well, so. This way they don't have to get up quite so early. Although you can uh, come in your jammies. We won't judge. <laughs> Most of the time when I don't see you guys on the live, I sew in my comfy clothes. So I wouldn't care if you came in your jammies. Where can I find the info for your retreats? Let me put in the link. It'll be up in just a second. You can click the website link there. And it'll take you to my retreat website.
my friend Stephen is also going to have a retreat coming up on May the 4th. As he likes to say, may the 4th be with you. <laughs> He'll, he put out a video. So if you go to his channel, uh, information about his retreat, um, and he will have signups starting when he gets back from Australia. It's all in his video when he's going to have signups. Um, so don't email him now because he's leaving for Australia. If you email him now, he won't see it. Uh, but when he gets back, um, he's going to have all that or the signups ready for his retreat. And his retreat fills up really fast. So um, if you guys want to attend his retreat, it's free. He does it out of the goodness of his heart. He will say he's not a good person, but he is. <laughs> and uh, it's free. All you have to do is sign up. But what he does ask is that if you sign up, that you're making a commitment to make sure you show up. Because if you don't show up and you don't cancel, you're taking a spot away from other people because he usually has a wait list. So if you're free that day and you want to come to his retreat, it's a UFO whip retreat. There's not an organized project. You just bring your own project and work on it for the day. That's, it's always a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to see everybody and all that stuff. So, um, oh, yay. Chris has said, text, to, oh, to Mary. Mary, send me a picture. I want to see that tree. <laughs> Will you have fabric requirements out for your retreat? Does a person have to print out patterns? Yes and yes. So um, the fabric requirements will be out about two weeks before the retreat. So you can start gathering all your fabrics up, uh, probably fabric requirements and cutting instructions. And then a couple days before the retreat, probably about three days before the retreat, we'll send you guys the pattern. We don't want to send the patterns too soon then because in the past we've had people that got patterns too soon for things and they like did the whole quilt before the retreat and that's kind of silly or sad in a way because we're getting together to sew together so uh we don't want to send them too far but it'll be enough time where you can get your patterns printed if you need to take it somewhere and get it printed because i know there was a few people that had to go to like a staples or something like that to get them printed so Landa said, got to run, have fun. Stephen and Walter, have fun. Thanks, Landa. Talk to you soon. Uh, think about the patterns beforehand. Yes. Yes, I will show you what I'm working on in just a second, Cindy. So I'm binding my rock candy quilt. So I got half the binding done, and then I had to take all the clips that were on this part <laughs> and move them to this part. So now I'm going to bind to this part. They've got all the clips on now. So just got that done. So let's get this bad boy done. My goal was to have this finished by tomorrow because Shannon's finishing up the Rock Candy So Long on her channel. Um, so I wanted to have the quilt finished before then. That was my goal. And I'm cutting it to the wire, but <laughs> I'm getting it there. Just need to. Good night, Jana. Good to see you here. Um Rethread my machine here. Came on, did it? Okay, there we go. Get back to the spot where I left off. And stitch up this bad boy. Cutting it down to the wire here to get this done before her live tomorrow, but thankfully I had today to sew. I didn't have anything else scheduled except to work on this. So that's a whole lot of clips. I know. <laughs> I sometimes think maybe I go a little crazy with clips, but if it holds it in place, <laughs> I'm happy to do it. Elizabeth said, that's looking delicious. Thank you. I'm super excited to get it done. So close. I was really dreading the binding on this because it's a larger quilt. But now that I'm only like a couple turns away from it being done, very excited.
do I do free motion? Do you free motion your quilts on the long arm? I have in the past. Uh, now that I have the computerization, I don't anymore. Uh, I have enough patterns in my computer to do, I probably have nearly a thousand patterns. So I have enough to do a lot of quilts. <laughs> so pretty much anything, any pattern you can imagine or come up with, I have on my machine or I can get. So I, I let the computer do it. Done on time is done on time. <laughs> I like it, Valerie. That's good. Steph, I wear my quilting grippy gloves when putting on binding. It helps me with hand fatigue. Oh, that's a good idea. I haven't thought about that. I never thought about that, Steely. I haven't used those gloves since I used a free motion on my domestic years ago. Of course, I've had a long arm now for quite a while, so I haven't had to. I've been fortunate not to have to do that, but. I never thought about that for binding. I'll have to try it on the next one. I got to find the gloves. Uh, let's see. Philippa said, Stephanie, will the projects for Millersburg go up on your in your store after the retreat? Yes. Uh, well, not the projects, but the quilt. Yes, the quilt pattern will. It's a secret until Millersburg. And then after that, um, I will let you guys see it. So I'm really excited about that. Mary said, sent you an email. Oh, thank you. Uh, Charlotte said, I did my first free motion quilting yesterday on a wall hanging. Yay. Good for you. That's awesome. If you guys remember my mosaic star quilt, the ombre, the ombre quilt, that one had a mixture of computerized and free motion. Um, and reason being, I did the computerized. And then when I took it, when I looked at it, it was too, I had a bunch of empty spaces and I didn't like that. So I filled it in with a bunch of bubbles. So that's probably the last thing that I free motioned other than really small projects. Like when I did the uh, shamrocks a couple weeks ago or last week, I guess, gosh, that was just last week. <laughs> The shamrock uh, hot pad for the table, that one I did here on my domestic, but that wasn't anything fancy. I just, um, you know, went around the shamrocks and then I did some lines in the shamrocks to make it look like leaves, but that was a small piece. So I wasn't going to put that on the long arm. Oops. The whole camera. Uh, but yeah, I mostly quilts. They're all on my long arm and computerized. Quilting gloves work well for me, said Cindy. Sometimes I used, I just use one hand. Cool. I'll have to try that. When I get back, I plan to try custom quilting on my computer program on the long arm. Great. I know you were practicing a bit, so. I'm looking forward to seeing that, Stephen. I think that's going to be nice. Uh, time my plan is about, or the plane leaves at six tomorrow, but we leave the house at two. Best thing you can do, Stephen, is have a car service. Y'all can afford it. If you ever go on a trip, don't drive your car to the airport because number one, it might not be there when you get back. And number two, oh my gosh, have you guys seen the price of parking at airports anymore? It's crazy. Hi, Jeannie.
I'm old and shoving quilts through my Janome 3160 on the floor is killing my body. Oh my gosh, Karen. I have a 3160, Karen. I don't know how you're doing whole quilts on that thing. <laughs> it has a very small throat space. That's the machine, Karen, that I use for like zigzag and all kinds of other stuff, but I don't use it for quilting at all or piecing. Take an Uber or Lyft easier and cheaper. Yeah, that's what we usually do. We usually Uber. Unless it's just one of us going, like if I'm just going, my husband will take me and pick me up and the same when he goes like on business trips. But if we're both going or the whole family's going, we'll take a car service or like you said, Uber. I'll leave my car at the airport for a week. So pricey. We prefer a private service because we're snobs. <laughs> oh, Karen said. Oh, I'm having trouble with thread breaks. I have an old long arm and it doesn't have stitch regulation, no computer. I have needle up, down, speed control. I pull up my bobbin thread and can stitch four stitches. Um, it might be a tension issue or it could be that you're going too fast, especially since you don't have a stitch regulator to keep your stitches even so I would try slowing down if it's not a speed issue it might be a tension issue also what kind of thread are you using because it could be a, a thread issue too depending on what kind of thread you're using I use um I know some people said you can only use polyester thread on a long arm that's not true um, I only quilt my quilts with cotton thread, but you do have to use a thicker cotton thread. So, um, Aurifil makes, if you're an Aurifil person, makes a 40 weight three ply thread. That's a special thing for long arm machines. Um, I use a 50 weight three ply from, um, I use King Tut or Masterpiece. So it needs to be a stronger thread if you're using cotton. Walter and I are like a L'Oreal product. We're worth a little more. <laughs> Here and I, I don't know what it's polyester. Okay. It might be a tension issue then because polyester is pretty strong. It really shouldn't be breaking. You might want to play around with it. It could be your bobbin tension or it could be your top thread tension. Oh, I'm coming to the last corner, guys. I'm going to have this quilt bound. So excited. Uh, I love King Tut, said Catherine. Me too. I love King Tut thread. Not only does it come in a few solid colors, but it has all the variegated colors, which I love. This quilt, I used variegated thread. It's like black and white and gray variegated. And it was a King Tut thread. I can't remember the name of it, but it it was perfect. So I couldn't really use white because there's so many colors and black border, and I couldn't use black because the black would overtake the uh, the quilt. So it was per it just worked out perfect. Uh, 
I have 42 quilt tops hanging in the closet. Wow, we. I think you have more than I do. <laughs> I thought I had a lot. I think I've got, I don't even know. The last count I had was like almost 30, but in the last few weeks, I've quilted quite a few quilt tops. So I'm down, down to the high teens, I think. You beat me. Do you sew with cuddle fabric? I have. I like to, um, I've made a few cuddle scarves and they came out really well. Um, the thing I like about cuddle is that if you make things like a scarf, it's this, it's very forgiving as far as the stitches because they melt into the cuddle. So if you mess up the stitches, they, nobody's going to see it. <laughs> um, and I've used cuddle on the back of quilts before. Um, they're really good for kit for quilts for kids or babies and they stitch so nicely you just have to put them on the long arm the correct direction so you have to um load them up on the long arm with the salvage um on the horizontal uh so on each rail of the long arm else it if you do it the other way it stretches and once you take your quilt off the long arm the back goes and then it's all crunched up so you have to be really careful when you load it on a long arm that you don't stretch the material but um so far knock on wood i haven't had that problem so they've come out really nicely i've been really lucky and the pattern unless you get the really thick minky the pattern shows up really nice on the back of those quilts. So you can really see, see the quilting, which is nice. I finished! <laughs> Yay! Uh, let's see. May we see the white part to look at the quilting thread? Yeah, sure. I will show you guys the full quilt. Oh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. It made me like keep going and get this done because I really procrastinate when it comes to binding. <laughs> all right, all finished. Here's the quilt, all bound. And here's the backing. I used that uh, ombre. You guys know I like ombre. <laughs> An ombre 108 because it's a big quilt. So I didn't wasn't going to sew it together like six yards of fabric um and here's the quilting hopefully you guys can see that so all done yay got it done just in time <laughs> i made it <laughs> so love it awesome Thank you guys. Um, sorry, I didn't have the down camera so you could watch what I was doing. I, I, if I would have known a little bit ahead of time, I would have done that. Um, so I do apologize for that. That's my fault. I should have just had it ready to go from now on. I will next week. We're going to work on the rope bowls. I'm going to dye some rope this week and try to put up a little video about that. Um, and then we'll work on the rope bowls together in case you're interested in dyeing. Uh, your rope. Um, I got the idea, like I said, from QuiltCon because they had a bunch of dyed rope there for rope bowls, but it was really expensive for like 50 or yards or 50 feet or whatever it was. It was like $25. And I was like, okay, I know that you can get like a hundred yard pack for like $2. So I'm not spending $25 on. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I can just do this myself. So we're going to see if Stephanie can actually do this herself and we're going to, I'm going to dye it this week. We'll see how that goes. So wish me luck. <laughs> I did want to show you guys a couple of things really quick before I go. Um, I don't like to overly advertise too much, but you guys know I have a shop and there's a lot of new fabrics coming in in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the one that just came in, I'm really excited about. So actually let me take the plastic off of it so I can show you a little bit better. Um, Thank you all so much. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you all for saying it's pretty. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'm just so excited that I got it done before tomorrow. So thank you guys for sticking with me this evening and encouraging me to keep going. 
Um, let's see. Did you see Shannon Fabrics is having a free Zoom once a month on different techniques to sew with cuddle? I did see that. I haven't been able to like figure out how to join or anything like that. I've just been really busy. I'm hoping after Millersburg, I don't have another retreat. Well, we have the virtual retreat, but I don't have another in-person retreat until September. <laughs> so I'm hoping my life will settle down a little bit so I can do some of that kind of stuff. So this is the new uh, Ombre Confetti Metallic from V & Co. Just came in. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this really quick because I have some half yard bundles. And it fades. And here's that one. And here's this one, pink. show you guys these really quick because I just put them in my shop because I know a lot of people always ask me like what do I have new in my shop so this is brand new um I have half year bundles and I have dessert rolls and I'll talk about the rope bowl in just a second what you need I'm going to show you guys these colors because they're so pretty because obviously I like the ombre <laughs> this one's my favorite blue <laughs> And I like this other blue too, it's pretty, it's darker. So there's the new ombre confetti metallic that's in my shop now. There's half yard bundles and there's dessert rolls. If you don't know what a dessert roll is, it's five inches by width of fabric strips and you get two of each color. There's 20 strips in this thing. So it's like kind of like double width of a jelly roll. So kind of neat. All right, so let's go back to the rope bowls because you guys are asking. What kind of rope do you need? Okay. So if you go to Walmart or the dollar store or something like that, or even Amazon, you can buy this rope on Amazon. The rope should be 100% cotton clothesline. Now you can sew with polyester, but I'm not sewing with polyester. So I'm not going to be able to tell you if something goes wrong or how to fix it. And I'm assuming if you sew with polyester, you're probably going to want to sew with polyester thread. Um, but I do know that people make them out of polyester. Um, but I make my rope bowls out of 100% cotton rope. This is clothesline rope. Um, I believe this one is three eighths of an inch or let me think about that for a second. I think it's either five sixteenths or three eighths of an inch, but it's just clothesline rope. So if you go to get clothesline rope, I'm going to imagine they would have this at any of like hardware stores or something like that too. But I know you can get this at the dollar stores. You can get it at Walmart. And like I said, Amazon. Now this one happens to be made by the Gypsy Quilter because they make a clothesline rope for quilters and you can get this on Amazon. Um, this is a hundred yards. You won't, you don't need a hundred yards to make a rope bowl. You can probably make it with 50 yards. Um, I usually can get one larger size rope bowl and a couple of coasters out of one of these. So, but I'm going to be dying one of these this week. I'm going to dye it. I have a teal color, of course. <laughs> Uh, dye that I'm going to experiment with. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> At any rate, we'll be here next week and we can sew this. All you'll need is rope. You need a, a sewing machine that does zigzag. So I typically stitch on my straight stitch machine. So I'm going to have to get my zigzag machine out because you have to zigzag. And if you don't want to dye your rope, the way you can make this really, really pretty and colorful without dyeing it is to use variegated thread. That's typically what I've made in the past. I've never dyed the rope before, so this is going to be a new adventure. Um, I've usually taken this and used um, whatever color variegated thread. It can be, uh, the last one I did was sort of pastel -y colors, so it kind of looked like Easter, like it had pink and yellow and lilac and blue in it. Um, so that was really pretty. Uh, we did these at one of my retreats, and all the ladies there used variegated thread. I had I gave that to them. And I think they had the choice between pink or green and they were all variegated of those colors. So it was really pretty. Uh, they're really fun and they're really easy. I've had a few people say, I wanna make one of those, but it looks so hard and I have no idea what I'm doing. I promise you it's super easy. This is one of the easiest things I've ever sewn. Um, so, and it's all, this one is 100% cotton. So I'm gonna attempt to dye this this week. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So uh, yeah, so that's the rope that you need. So it's just clothesline rope, clothesline, but 100% cotton. Gorgeous fabric said Gidget. Uh, Carissa said beautiful. Thank you. Tired of having an, oh, she's talking to Mary. Uh, okay. 
So that's all I've got for today. Um, Fort Worth Fabric Studio. For those of you, uh, Charlotte said you can also dye the rope bolt after making it. Yeah, you probably could. Um, so Fort Worth Fabric Studio. So I wanted to tell you guys this, give you a little heads up. They have not put the announcement out there yet, although they posted a little post on Facebook today. For those of you who are Fort Worth Fabric Studio fans, I know there's a lot of you here that like to do their mystery sew alongs. Their next mystery sew along is coming out really soon, like within the next few days. So they put a little post in the Facebook group today that they have, um, letting people know that it's coming. So take a look out for that. I don't think they have a ton of kits this time. So I think it's going to sell out really quickly. It's a smaller project, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So I can't tell you any more about it yet. But as soon as they announce it, then I will put up a video about what the project's going to be. Um, I've seen the fabric, though, and it's so pretty and lovely for the upcoming like spring summer so i think you guys are gonna love it so if you like the fort worth fabric studio so alongs check their facebook group or um back here on my channel in a few days for that announcement uh so that's coming and then like i said wednesday is the so day that we usually have that steven and i usually um host but it'll just be me so come on by and say hello the link for that is in the community tab of my channel and then next Saturday is the rope bowl. So really excited about that. And after we do the rope bowl next Saturday, then Shannon on her channel is going to be hosting the little hooter or the owl sew along from legit kids. So it'll be a fun day next Saturday. So I hope to see you all there. Thank you guys so much for staying. I know you couldn't see the project and I apologize for that because I didn't have my other camera, but you encouraged me to get this done. <laughs> Binding is definitely not my favorite thing, but it's all done and finished. I'm so excited to have this quilt finished and we'll see you tomorrow on Shannon's channel. She's going to be sewing all the rows together to finish the top. So looking forward to that. Take care guys and have a great weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye.